Hey there everyone, my name is Kia and today is March the 29th. It's so great that you're able to join me for today's verse of the day. There's no better way than to start the day than in God's word. My hope is to better equip each viewer to live authentically for God by expounding and applying scripture to our lives. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell notification so you won't miss any new content that's released. Now, before we get started, let's pray to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for waking us up and allowing us to see another beautiful and wonderful day you've created. Father God, we give you all the glory and honor and praise, Lord, and we acknowledge that you are the only one who, who is capable and who is able and who has woke us up today, Lord, and brought us here before the reading of your word. We are privileged and honored, and we ask in Jesus' name that your spirit would lead and guide us this morning. Please have our hearts open and receptive to you that we may hear thus say of the Lord. Teach us your way, Lord, and teach us how to be obedient to your word, that we may grow continuously in the grace and knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. And when you do these things, we'll be mindful to give you praise, honor, and glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today's verse of the day is found in Numbers chapter 14, verse 19. Pardon the iniquity of this people. I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. So we're kind of like in the middle of something going on here. Um, so as far as I can see, uh, Moses is, um, Moses has issued for uh, like these spies in Egypt, from um, Israel camp to go and speak spy out the land of Canaan, come back and report, um, you know, what they have saw. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the story, um, Caleb and, and Joshua is the only one that came back with a positive report saying, yeah, there's giants in the land, but our God is bigger than all that. The land is good. Even though there's giants there, we can go by the power of God to conquer and, and take over this land as he has issued. Now, the rest of the spies came back and said, oh, the giants are too big. The land might be good, but it ain't worth all that because the because the giants are big and we're, we're going to be destroyed. They didn't even consider God. They didn't even consider all that he has done for them in the land of Egypt prior to this you know they didn't even remember recall how he gave him manna in the middle of the wilderness he they didn't even recall how he gave him water and sustenance and never let either of their feet to be worn out he they never even considered god giving them the law they never considered all the works and the acts of god they quite frankly they forgot they they, they didn't even they were in a here now, and they're here now seemed like a very bad situation. So they were unbelieving, quite frankly, of God. But Joshua and Caleb were not. So because um, Israel listened to the majority of, of the spies, um, they too said, listen, we're not going into the promised land. Take us back to Egypt. That's what they said. So God righteously got very upset, indignant. Um, because they failed to believe in the God who has proven himself over and over again. So he refused for that generation of, um, of Israelites to enter the land of Canaan. In fact, he was ready to destroy them on the spot. Okay, So Moses is pr praying and pleading to God for him not to destroy the, the children of Israel. Um, so in verse 18 of today's, uh, well, of, um, number chapter 14, we are reminded that the Lord is long suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiveness, iniquity, and transgression, meaning that God is the forgiver of sins. Okay. So it's only right that because of who God is and who God is, was completely revealed to Moses. So Moses had was keenly aware of who the God of the universe, the God of Israel, who, who he was or who he is, uh, so to speak. So he prays according to 
the person of God. In verse 19, pardon the iniquity of this people. He, so he's praying, Moses is praying to God and pleading on behalf of who God is. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy. So Moses is pleading according to who he knows God is, merciful. And especially according to verse 18, what we just read, that he's abundant in mercy. So Moses is praying, according to, your, to the greatness of your mercy, please pardon the iniquity of Israel. And just as, so now Moses is getting ready to plead, um, uh, 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 going to plead on behalf of not only the people, but kind of remind God, so to speak, um, of when he showed great mercy, right? Just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. So Moses is asking God to forgive the people according to his great and abundant mercy of who he is because he has forgiven the same stiff necked people ever since Egypt, even unto now. And just like all the times I was just talking about how they were moaning and complaining about they didn't have no food, no water, no nothing. God forgave them for everything. They even made a golden calf while Moses was up there getting the law and the commandments of God. So, Israel had a long history of being disobedient to God. God, in his great and abundant mercy, forgiven them for their sins, withheld punishment for them, from them. Sometimes it takes someone like Moses who knows God, who knows who the mercies of God, the, the, the grace of God, um, the character of God, um, to plead on someone else's behalf. And... And it, and it worked, and it worked. Um, the summation of this is that in verse 20, then the Lord said in response to Moses' prayer and request, I have pardoned according to your word. How beautiful is that? That God turned away from destroying the children of Israel because of the prayer and the pardon request that Moses made on their behalf. But Israel did not get off very, uh, very lightly. Because uh, in verse 21, he says, But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. Praise God. But all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt in the wilderness have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, nor shall see any of those who rejected me or rejected me see it. So... Israel still faced consequences, but God spared them from being destroyed. They, in turn, just did not enter the promised land that they didn't want to enter anyway because of fear. They failed to trust in God. So the moral or the, the, the summation of this entire verse of today is that God is merciful. He's long-suffering. He is gracious. He is mighty. He is so compassionate towards us. But we also must believe in him because he has proven himself to us over and over again. No one is without excuse. God has proven himself to us. We must believe in him no matter how bad our situation is. We must believe in him even if it's just because of what he has done in the past. He has a perfect record of being right and nothing catches him by surprise and nothing is stronger or mightier than God. So, be obedient, trust in him, but also remember that even if you do sin, ask God for forgiveness, even so basically on his character. Get to know God's character as Moses got to know God's character and rest your hope in God. Brothers and sisters, comment below and share your thoughts on today's verse of the day. I'm anxious to hear what you have to say. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in for another verse of the day. I hope and pray you come back tomorrow for more. And until then, may God bless you and have a beautiful and wonderful day. Bye.